You're aspiring to get into a global investment bank and you're preparing yourself for that interview for your dream job. With the global investment bank or a hedge fund accounting firm, all of these names mentioned here have set up operations in India with accounting, fund administration, corporate actions, OTC derivative processing, etc. And the interviewer wants to check your knowledge about capital markets, financial instruments, products, prices, etc. And he might ask you this question. Do you know anything about financial derivatives? You've got to be prepared for this kind of question if you're taking up an interview with a global investment bank. Hello, everybody. I'm a learning partner, Sushila Hariharan. And if you're interested in learning more about fund accounting, corporate actions, trade life cycle, and OTC derivatives, do subscribe to my YouTube channel where I provide research rich content on these aspects. In this video, we're going to take a look at the basics of options. What is the concept of options? Why does this financial instrument even exist in the markets? What are the different types of options? Let's take an example of my favorite fund, Harry, Hari Hedge Fund, and let's understand the examples of option expiry times. If you like the content on my channel, do subscribe to it, press the like button, and share the content with your friends and colleagues in the investment banking fraternity. Let's take a look at option contracts. Option contracts are financial contracts that give the buyer all the rights around the contract. I have often sat at interview panels and I find that people use the word option is an asset. Options are financial instruments, okay? They are contracts that are issued by the exchange and therefore option contracts are financial instruments. They give the buyer all the rights under the contract. The seller has all the obligations around the contract. Every option contract must have a settlement date. Okay, settlement date in the option terminology is also called as expiry date. Let's understand the different types of options first with who are the parties to an option. Every option contract has two parties, the buyer, also called as the owner or the holder, and the seller, also called as a writer. Okay, so we have not yet gone into the types of options. We're just discussing the parties to an option. All right. Now, the buyer, in some contracts, you might say it's a buyer. Some contracts, you'll see the word owner. In some contracts, you see the term holder. They all mean the same side of the contract. The buyer has all the rights to the contract. The seller or the writer of the option has all the obligations to do whatever the buyer wants. This is very important because here, as the English term says, option means choice. And who is having the choice? The buyer is having the choice. And who is giving the buyer the choice? The writer is giving the buyer the choice. Let's take a look at the different types of what are the rights that they have. The buyer also has the rights. What are these rights? Okay. The rights are whether to exercise the contract or to allow the contract to lapse. The seller has only the obligations. Let's revisit this term again. The buyer has all the rights. There are two rights that the buyer has. The right to exercise the contract, right to lapse the contract. The seller has only the obligations and the seller must do whatever the buyer wants to do. The, two, the buyer or the holder has all the rights and because the buyer or the holder has all the rights, the buyer must pay something to the seller, right? Because the seller is giving these rights to the buyer. The price that the buyer pays for getting these rights is called as the premium. The premium is always paid by the buyer to the seller, irrespective of whether the contract is exercised or lapsed, irrespective of whether the option contract is exercised or whether the option contract is lapsed, the buyer always pays premium. The seller always receives the premium. Okay. The two types of options at a very basic level are call options, which gives the buyer the right to buy or right to lapse the contract. And the put option, which gives the buyer the right to sell or right to lapse the contract. Okay, so a call option is a right to buy the underlying asset or right to lapse the contract. A put option is a right to sell the contract, uh, underlying asset or right to lapse the contract. This is how we basically talk about call and put options. Okay, so call is a right to buy, put is a right to sell, 
Who has the rights? The buyer has the rights. The seller has only the obligations. Let's get more technical over here. The buyer has all the rights. The writer has all the obligations. And therefore, the buyer always pays the writer the premium. Okay, let's go to my favorite hedge fund, Hari Hedge Fund. And what is Hari Hedge Fund doing today? Hari Hedge Fund is buying a call option. Okay, and because Hari Hedge Fund is the buyer, they have a right to exercise or a right to lapse the contract. Let's say they're buying the call option from KH, who is a market maker. And KH mark, as a market maker will always receive the premium that Hari Hedge Fund has to pay because it's the writer of the contract. Revisiting the slide again, Hari Hedge Fund has bought a call option from KH, who is a market maker. Hari Hedge Fund has a right to exercise or right to lapse the contract. KH has all the obligations to do whatever the buyer wants to do. Now let's take an understanding of what are the details of the option. All right. The details are as follows. The trade date is 16 January 2023. Uh, the underlying asset, the in fee spot price is 1600. In fee call option strike price rupees 1300. Expiry is 25th January 2023. The premium is 200. Simple questions that come up to your mind. What is the financial instrument? What is the underlying asset? What is the underlying asset price? Is it a call or a put option? What is the strike price? What is the premium? And finally, what is the expiry? Let's answer each of these questions right now. The financial instrument, is it a derivative product? The underlying asset is enforces stock in the spot market. The underlying asset price is 1,600 rupees. The whether it's a call or a put option, it's a call option. And the strike price is rupees 1300 i'm going to pause over here for understanding what is the strike price the strike price is the price of the contract which is issued by the exchange every derivative has a strike price and that is the price at which the contract is benchmarked against the premium paid by the buyer that is hurry hedge fund 2 kching which is a market maker is rupees 200 and the expiry is on 25th january 2023 okay so these specs, these product specs have to be understood very clearly if you're trying to understand a call option or a put option. I'm going to be uploading very soon another slide on the payoffs. So therefore, keep your eyes open and hit that bell button to get notified of any such in new videos that I'm going to be uploading on derivative products. On the basis of settlement, also called as expiry, we have three types of options. American options, European options and Bermudan options. American options can be exercised any day prior to settlement. European options can be exercised only on settlement. And Bermudan options have one settlement date, but have an option to be settled anytime in between those settlement dates. So you have an American option, European option, and Bermudan option for the settlement period. Thank you everybody for watching into this channel. If you have any questions, do drop in a mail at globalmarketsacademy at gmail.com. I'm your learning partner, Sushila Hariharad, because there's no better way to learn about investment banking and fund accounting than this. Thank you.